Yo, what's on, guys? <laughs> Yo, what's going on? Why, why do the hands? Yo, what's going on, guys? Yo, what's going on, guys? Ben Splattis here back with another video. And today, guys, this week, I thought that we would do something slightly different because we're trying to always keep the channel fresh. But today, we are going to be talking about how to move to LA for film. And the way we're going to be doing this is by kind of giving you guys tips that I wish I maybe knew before coming here. And of course, guys, as always, if you're interested in some more in-depth kind of written analysis, down below in the description is my Substack where I have written a little blog post that you guys can follow along. There's some additional information there that might be useful to you. And of course, guys, whether you live in LA now or you're watching this video because you're trying to move out to LA, I hope that this is useful for everybody at home. So for those who don't know, which might be a lot of people here, I moved from Iowa in 2021 of November. Iowa, for those who don't know, which that might be a lot more people is a very small state very flat you know we're kind of known for our corn uh, and that's really it so when I moved here from Iowa I didn't know anybody coming into it I had no relatives that lived in Los Angeles I didn't have a single business connection coming into it I had no formal education I didn't have a job lined up I came here with practically nothing except for some money in my savings account and the stuff in my backpack pretty much literally I started pretty much like as low as you can go on the totem pole which I think is what makes my story good maybe you at home actually are starting a little bit higher maybe you have a film degree or you have a friend that lives out here if you don't and you're starting also kind of at ground zero then this is great the first place that I lived was this like shared house and at any given time there's 20 to like 25 people that live in the house and I thought this would be really cool at first when I moved there just being around a bunch of other filmmakers because that's kind of what the house was uh, advertised as but then after about three months I just kind of got really tired of not even having my own room let alone having to share a bathroom with like six other people a fridge with 12 people and then a whole house with like 25 people and after three months I moved to where I live now actually the box room in kind of South LA I have my own room which is a lot more than what I had a year and a half ago and I'm pretty happy and through a lot of like work and grinding and just continuously like stressing over how am I gonna pay my bills slowly that reality that I lived a year and a half ago where I was just taking a bunch of money out of my savings account is becoming less and less of a reality as I begin to get more gigs within the business but how do you get to that point a year and a half in. The very first thing I can say is make sure you have some money in your savings account. When I moved here, I did have some saved up just because I've been working retail for like the last year and a half through the COVID times. And so having that money was super useful. And I will be honest with you guys, for the three months that I stayed at that house, I didn't get really any gigs. I had like two gigs within like two to three months. It was really tough. And I've mentioned this in a video prior, how you know how hard it is to actually get into the business when you're just starting out, especially from my position of, of ground zero. And within three months, a bulk of what I brought with me was already gone so yes bring some savings with you is always a good idea I would say if you found a place to live in Los Angeles it's probably good to at least have a year's worth of rent in your savings if not more because if you expect things to just hit the road right away and get lucky with a plethora of gigs there's pretty likely chance that that's not gonna happen so the next thing I can kind of give you guys is one that I wish I did a little bit more of because I think it would have helped me get on the, the track of getting gigs a little faster is working for free I don't ever really recommend working for free unless like you came from like where I came from where you're very new to the city and on top of that you have zero experience if you work for free and you work really hard and you're really green people will want to bring you back as long as again like I said you follow the PA guidelines that I posted in a previous video and also if you just look at some great places on how to find work you're gonna have no trouble finding free gigs entertaining the idea of more free gigs I just think gives you time to be on set more and at home losing money less you're still losing money but at least you're gaining the experience and the possible opportunity to get more work if that makes sense next thing I think I can recommend to you is come with a car or if you have the money to buy a car for the first year and a half pretty much of living here I didn't have a car so all all I had to do was rely on public transportation which that's just kind of the guy I am I'm very dedicated to the gig and I want to work and so if that means getting up three hours before call time to take a commuter train for two and a half hours to get to the gig that's what I had to do and most times it's really not that bad but I also am not ignorant enough to say that everybody can do it because it's definitely not for everybody and there were for sure a lot of days I guess nights where I worked 12 14 hour days and just really wanted to get home in like 20 minutes but instead I had to wait an extra hour and a half to get home and crash into bed when I got my car I mean a lot of things changed I, oddly enough the gigs that I got increased just because I was way more willing to take work that was like otherwise impossible to get through with Metro it's also just a safety issue too I mean I'm a guy so I don't think 
I have, I think I have a kind of a skewed view of it, but let's say you're a five foot female that weighs 90 pounds and you're riding the Metro at like 1130 at night. It is a scary place. I won't lie to you. And it's like, I just don't think public transportation is as available for the public as it could be. Number four, I think, is when you get here, try to avoid getting caught up in the like LA lifestyle. If you're here to work and you moved here for the film business, that should be your main priority. Of course, you should have some fun with your life. Go check out and try some new foods or some hiking trails, go to the beach. What's nice about LA is it has a lot of everything within such a small radius, which is great. And so you have a ton of different space for activities depending on what you want to do. But I think some people, including myself, have the notion that LA is this glamorous Hollywood lifestyle of partying and drinking every night and, you know, know rich caviar and the Malibu beaches and stuff like that which it can be but if you don't have the money for it to begin with you might get caught up in that lifestyle without actually being able to afford that lifestyle if I had spent my time exploring the city and having a lot more fun days than work days I probably would have ran out of money in like the fourth or fifth month and then I would have had to probably go home or be homeless so trust me you should try to grind to get out of the grind because if you do that, then you can actually stay in the place that you moved from wherever from to here. So this one's more applicable, again, if you're moving to a Los Angeles, but try to do some research as to like LA's city structure itself. It's definitely confusing when you don't know your way around Los Angeles, it's a big city. And so when I say this, I don't mean to memorize the entire city, but at least get an idea of some of the kind of sub cities like Burbank, for example, or where Long Beach might be, uh, Santa Monica. Also, maybe try to identify some bad parts of town if you can avoid them. For example, Skid Row is probably not a place that you want to walk through at 1 a.m. like I did, and that was a really scary experience, and maybe that'll be a story for a different day. But maybe if I had just done my research a little bit better, I would have probably found all that out. Going right off of that, guys, if you don't have a car and you do use a public transportation system, either use Google Maps or use the app called Transit. I'm not sponsored by either of these apps but these apps seriously help me out because forget trying to learn the LA public transportation system when you're fresh here and I can honestly say if I didn't have those two apps and my phone I would have been completely 100% screwed going along with that also try to avoid taking uber everywhere you go I think a metro tap card one ticket for a bus or train is $1.75 if you buy the pass it's like even more affordable and ends up being like a dollar per ride that saves you so much money not only on car gas but obviously on uber make sure you utilize things like Instagram Twitter Facebook Craigslist um, you know, find jobs fast and really put yourself out there. A lot of people are looking for green or new PAs and the real reason for that I just think is because they can pay you a little bit less but that's okay because you're green so it's all right. It's important to market yourself say hey you know I moved here from so and so or someplace there I'm here now looking for this kind of work I'll work for free or work for very little you'll be surprised who reaches out to you when they need work. Uh, let me think here uh, oh thesis films like uh, you know always search um, university job boards sometimes these thesis films at schools like USC or UCLA are, are looking for volunteers to just come help them on set not often but it is important. I wish I did this just because this could have got me also some onset experience that possibly could have led me to more work. If you want to move to LA, number one is do you have the finances to make it work? Meaning do you have money saved up that in case things don't work you can fall back on something? Number two is really ask yourself why am I moving to LA? Because if I'm being honest with you guys I don't think I'd live here if I didn't work in the film business. Period. But because it's here I just have no choice but to live here and I have to see it as a good thing rather than a bad thing. But make sure that you have a reason for moving to LA. If you just move here to move here, well, you're gonna be paying higher rent prices and stuff like that, higher gas prices as well. Is it really worth it? I'm not sure. Of course, meaning, is it really worth it if you don't have a reason to be here? That's what I'm saying, I'm not sure. For me, absolutely it is. And number three, I think would obviously, this is kind of an obvious one, but just make sure you have a place to live before you come here. I. I I've heard some stories from people that I've met over the years that they moved out here in their car or their van and then they lived out of that and there's nothing wrong with that per se, particularly that's not for me because I don't know, I just LA's not a safe city in, in my opinion, like sleeping in your car or your van, there's a great chance you could get robbed. Just like, you know, there's a good chance you get robbed in a house. but. I feel a little bit safer in a house as opposed to a car. Don't rush into signing a lease. The place I moved into from December to January, that was a sublease and I lived there for three months and then when I had to move, I wasn't tied down to anything and I also didn't like the area that I lived in and the house I live in now is a sublease as well, which is great because like, if I wanna move out someday, I'm not necessarily tied down here for another eight months or a year. So please, that's my last tip that I'll give you guys, but just don't tie yourself down to anything too fast. 
be open to a lot of LA, but also make sure that you are always keeping your options open, looking out for yourself, being safe, those kinds of things. LA is a, is a great place. I think for the film business, of course, it's an awesome place. There's just so much culture, there's so much food. It's, it is very different here. Maybe I'll make a story, a time video about my, exper my experiences personally living in LA since this time. I don't know if you guys would want to see that, but I just figured I'd share with you guys some tips on how to move to the great city of Los Angeles if you're starting with nothing at all and no experience and you don't know anybody. And like I said at the very beginning, if you have any of those things, a college degree or a friend that lives out here, you're already ahead of a lot of people. And hopefully that makes the process of kind of fitting in here a little bit easier for you. With that being said, guys, this video was uh, the first video we've recorded that went off almost without a hitch. We had two SWAT helicopters, that's it. But this is, a, this is great. This is great news. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Obviously, if you guys found it helpful, then make sure you guys leave a like down below. If you guys like me, I always post film content like this usually once a week. So feel free to subscribe. With that being said, guys, just last reminder, there is the Substack link down below. Go check it out if you haven't already. And go subscribe to it as well. It's completely free. You just get some nice blog posts that go along with these uploads and you can read all this stuff and it's great information and yada 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 you get the gist i say it every single video but with that being said guys thank you for watching sincerely i'll see you guys next week until next time peace